Clean Skies is a series of initiatives for getting to the point where we have sustainable, pollution-free air travel. The growth in, in air travel that's forecast over the next 20 years is staggering. And that's what this is all about. This is really creating that technology today so that massive expansion doesn't come at the price of the environment. My name is Bertrand Picard. I've initiated the Solar Impulse project in line with my family's tradition of exploration. I've seen the power of exploration to inspire people. My grandfather was the first man in the stratosphere, invented the pressurized cabin. My father made the deepest dive ever in the Marinas Trench, the deepest spot in the ocean. And they inspired me also to have this type of life. The history of aviation has changed the world in the last century. So when you implement solar energy on the airplane, it's like if you achieve what everybody considers to be impossible. Solar airplanes exist since a long time, so they have been developed over the years, but they could normally fly between 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the sun is high in the sky, but no one could fly through the entire day. And of course, no one could fly day and night. So we're getting close to this notion of perpetual endurance, and that's what makes it really unique. We had to find new technologies, new solutions, which did not come from the aviation world, but which had to be integrated for the first time in this airplane. At the first phase, by using Dasho Systems technology. Solar Impulse is, is a great project. This is a group of individuals that, I don't know if you want to call them entrepreneurs or pioneers or adventurers, but you know they're setting out to do something that hasn't been done before. The old way of doing things, which is to build a whole bunch of prototypes and to break them and, and try again, is not efficient. And what we do at Desso Systems is to create environments to virtually simulate, experience, optimize, and innovate in creating new products all in a virtual world so that we aren't punching holes in the ground with our aircraft to find out whether or not they work properly. We have to be able to simulate every aspect of that aircraft's behavior, construction, operation, along all of its mission profiles and all the eventualities and scenarios that may occur along with its flight profile, and we do that virtually. So we, we are literally you know, harmonizing product, nature, life, in a very clear way in Solar Impulse. And certainly, we can't find out over the middle of the Pacific Ocean that this aircraft won't make it across. Our purpose in, uh, in Clean Sky uh, and uh, in general for the, for the European aviation community is to decrease by four the, the CO2 emissions in 2050. Solar Impulse is a fascinating initiative. However, I don't believe that uh, this is uh, a forerunner of the future commercial aviation. The solar power needs so huge a surface that it cannot be. However, electrical propulsion can exist without the solar cells, but with batteries, or more probably uh, through hybrid propulsion. So, you know, putting together the classical propulsion with jet engines and electrical power. And in Clean Sky, we are working on that. There's a litany of, of technologies that, that need to be developed. Conductivity, energy storage, energy recovery, weight savings. We hear about the batteries, but that's not the real story. The real story is the innovation that went behind you know, developing this kind of aircraft. It is how aircraft will be in the future. Underlying all this, of course, is, is the most important ingredient, which is the, the, the people, the engineers that will create these aircraft. So understanding the, the kind of skills, both technical and problem solving and creative and imaginative that we need to develop the aircraft for tomorrow is a critical need. I think the focus really is on the first carbon-free or the first super environmentally friendly flight. And I think we're probably no more than 20 years away from that, maybe 30 years at the utmost. Today, the technology does not exist to transport passengers in a commercial solar airplane. But the technology to transport passengers also did not exist when the Wright brothers made their first flight in 1903. And some decades later, there were 200 passengers in every airplane crossing the oceans. So we see that we need pioneers in the beginning, opening the way, and then you need the industry to take it over and commercialize it on a more global scale. The worst is not to fail, the worst is not to try.